Australopithecus and Ardipithecus are two important genera in the human evolutionary timeline, providing crucial insights into our early ancestors. Australopithecus lived approximately 4 to 2 million years ago in Africa. Notable species include Australopithecus afarensis, represented by the famous fossil Lucy, discovered in 1974 by paleoanthropologist Donald Johansson and his team in the Afar Triangle region of Ethiopia, and also Australopithecus africanus. They walked upright but retained some ape-like features and played a significant role in the transition from ape-like ancestors to early humans. The conclusion that Lucy, the Australopithecus afarensis fossil, walked upright is based on several anatomical features of her skeletal remains. Donald Johansson and his team, who discovered Lucy in 1974, identified specific characteristics that are indicative of bipedalism. Pelvis. Lucy's pelvis was broad and short, similar to the pelvis of modern humans. This adaptation is associated with upright walking. Femur. The angle of Lucy's femur suggested bipedalism, as it aligns with the requirements for weight-bearing during walking on two legs. Knee and ankle bones. Examination of Lucy's knee and ankle bones indicated features consistent with bipedal locomotion. Regarding Lucy's gender, determining the sex of an individual from fossilized remains can be challenging, especially when dealing with fragmentary specimens. The name Lucy was given to the fossil as a reference to the Beatles' song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which was playing at the time of the discovery. The choice of the name doesn't imply knowledge of Lucy's gender. Subsequent discoveries of more complete specimens and improved techniques have allowed researchers to make more informed estimations about the sex of certain hominid fossils. Still, in the case of Lucy, her gender remains uncertain due to the incomplete nature of the fossilized remains. Ardipithecus Ardipithecus ramidus, or Ardi, discovered in Ethiopia's Afar region by an international team led by paleoanthropologist Tim White in 1994, showcased a mix of primitive and more evolved features, challenging previous notions of early hominid evolution, suggesting a unique adaptation to both tree climbing and walking upright on the ground. Here are some key aspects that led researchers to the conclusion that Ardi walked upright. Pelvis The structure of Ardi's pelvis is critical in determining bipedalism. Ardi's pelvis was found to be a mosaic of primitive and advanced features. While the iliac blades are still somewhat flared, resembling a more primitive form, the overall structure suggests a shift toward bipedalism. Foramen magnum position. The position of the foramen magnum, the opening at the base of the skull through which the spinal cord passes, is indicative of the habitual posture of an organism. In Ardi, the foramen magnum is positioned more forward on the skull, suggesting an upright posture. Foot and limb bones. The analysis of Artie's foot and limb bones also contributed to the understanding of her bipedal abilities. The anatomy of the foot suggested adaptations for walking on two legs with a divergent big toe, which is more human-like compared to the grasping toe seen in apes. Hands. Artie had relatively short fingers and a partially opposable big toe, which could be interpreted as adaptations to both walking on the ground and grasping in trees. This aligns with the idea that Artie represents a transitional form between more arboreal ancestors and later, fully bipedal hominins. The discovery of Artie provided important information about the common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees. Both Australopithecus and Ardipithecus fossils contribute to our understanding of bipedalism, tool use, and social behaviors in the early stages of human evolution. I hope you liked this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.